Good afternoon, this is Student Live, the show dealing with today's hottest topics. I'm Alex McGarry and joining me in the studio following the momentous Scottish referendum result are two of the most passionate supporters of the opposing No and Yes camps, celebrated novelist J.K. Rowling and sporting hero Andy Murray. As the Devo Max campaign gathers momentum, I'll be asking them for their views on the future of the United Kingdom. And later on in the programme, Harriet Williams takes the temperature on independence in the English regions. Yes, I'll be reporting on my visit to Bristol where there's been a most surprising response to the result. But first, right up to the wire, it was too close to call. Alex Salmon risked his political career and David Cameron risked his nation's parliamentary powers in the fight to win hearts and minds. In the end, the Nays had it with a 55% of the vote from a staggering 85% turnout. The Scottish people have spoken, but how will the rest of the UK respond? Yes, and with me today are two of Britain's greatest cultural heroes to discuss that very question. Firstly, hello. 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 And Andy, where do you think that the failures of the Yes campaign came from? I think uh, the biggest failure was the, the grey area in the sort of uh, people who didn't want to take a plunge into the unexpected as uh, they were scared. And uh, the aggressive campaign of the no vote, which was uh, verging on fear mongering, also didn't, didn't really help. But I wouldn't say it's been a complete failure. We've had a, it's been a victory for a democratic process in Scotland and across the world. Mm -hmm. And so conversely, Joanne, you must be thrilled with the result. Yes, I'm really happy to see the union sticking together. I mean, it's very close to my heart. I wrote a lot of Harry Potter in Edinburgh. I spent a lot of money and time on this. So yeah, I'm chuffed. Really. Well, yes, a million pounds is a lot. Now, Andy, you got some controversy with a recent tweet of yours, didn't you? Could you tell me a bit about that, please? Well, uh, I was just using Twitter as it's meant. I was expressing my views on the subject, which uh, was split down the middle. And I believe that I was quite unfairly treated in, uh, in the responses that I got to that. Uh, I haven't changed my views. And uh, if you don't like it, you know where the unfollow button is. Mm, yes, sticking to your guns, I like that. Prime Minister Cameron let it slip that the Queen's reaction to the result was to purr down the phone to him. Did you make any similar noises there, Joanne? <laughs> no, but I did let out a cheer and a clink of glasses, so it's, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, my final question is for both of you. Um, where does Scotland stand now in the Union? Just yeah. very quickly. We have let, uh, we've let Westminster know that this doggy has a bark, and uh, we are not afraid to use it, and we, we are now want to see Westminster keep the promises that it made during the referendum campaign. Joanne, very quickly. Um, well, I just think Scotland needs to be made felt more welcome, so. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. Even though the Scottish no vote has saved the Union, the fight to keep the United Kingdom has only just begun as the English regions embrace the idea of Devo Max. Over to Harriet now. Thanks, Alex. Scotland rejected independence on the promise of greater powers for their Parliament. Now, this promise is being dangled at England's regions, possibly a ruse to slow down constitutional reform, but it seems that some English cities are already embracing the idea. Bristol has its own currency, the city's mayor, George Ferguson, is an avid supporter of the Bristol Pound, and so, it is rumoured, is the Queen. Plans are already being drawn up for a Bristol City flag to be designed by Banksy and a new anthem composed by DJ Ronnie Size. How's that for independence? Thank you, Harriet, for that report. Many thanks to my studio guests, J.K. Rowling and Andy Murray. Tomorrow, I'll be speaking to Britain's oldest train robber. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>